All right, guys, so before the video starts, I gotta hit you guys with a motivational video like we always do. How to make it. The idea of making it in a short period of time is the worst mindset you can possibly have. So how to make it. What I mean by, what I mean by that is, you know, we all have a purpose in life. We all have a, uh, you know, some type of a, a dream that we want to accomplish. And, you know, everyone has a dream. Everyone has a passion. Everyone's talented at something. Don't let, you know, the saddest thing in life is wasted talent. You know, why would you want to waste your talent when you could be doing your talent and make a living off of it and, you know, uh, make it. Uh, when you start something great, a lot of people around you are going to shit on it. Uh, shitting on your ideas, shitting on your dreams, shitting on your mindset, shitting on your aspirations. Um, but the saying is true. Misery does love company, right? So if someone sees that, you know, their life is miserable and they're unhappy, a lot of people are going to scratch and claw and try to bring you down. Because the last thing a hater wants to see is you win. We all go through this thing called the grind mode. And when grind mode comes on, you know, I don't know if this is only my mind step, but no matter what I do, I'm grinding. I just fully believed in myself. I never, ever, ever gave up. And I always surrounded myself with good people who wanted to build something with me. Yeah, it's crazy seeing these videos, like, of both of them. And look, look, looking at what they are now, not for real. That's how you know what they're saying is not bullshit, bro. Yeah. But with that being said, clown boys. Is that Chris? Is that Chris? What's up, guys? Welcome back to the podcast that goes unnoticed. Welcome back to the spot. Don't make it hot. We love you. Even if you love us not, ah. And welcome to episode 102. Shout out to all the listeners on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Instagram, Facebook. Uh, TikTok, YouTube, and Patreon. Patreon, I get your own personal shout out in the end. And uh, I want to say shout out to everybody again. Just want to always want to give you uh, yeah shout outs to the people from the last episode. Yeah, going crazy right now. It's already at eight plus, eight pl uh, eight k plus views and comments. Yeah, I already know. Yeah, go crazy every single time with the comments, showing love. And yeah, again, I just have nothing but thanks for you guys. Facts, facts. We appreciate the love and support always. And. It's been a it's been another uh, hectic week, <laughs> like so much happened. Like last 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 episode, we were like, I wonder what the fuck's gonna happen next. But before we get into all that, um, just a little weekly recap from from both of us. I know I know you finally moved in to your new house. I think you're like what like a weekend, uh, or something like that. Yeah, this would be my. I moved in on Sunday, so. On basically, Sunday tomorrow, basically, I'll... basically a week now. Cause look at the time, bro. Yeah, so. A weekend. Yeah. So, how are you feeling now? Cause I, I also did help you move, move and shit. But how, how is it adjusting to just living by yourself with your girl and kids? I mean, the first day was kind of weird. You know, like I'm used to a lot of noise, a lot of uh, just shit going on and stuff. Yeah. So it was a little fucking weird, and also it fucking bothered me how much like stuff it was everywhere, like the mess and shit like that. And we still got a lot of stuff to put away. Yeah. Cause it's a different setup. We had shit set up differently, like closets, shit like that. And now it's a lot more stuff being added to the house. So it's just kind of like sort of confusing of like trying to find where everything goes, the right spots to everything and shit. And that, that's been the only like part, hard part to adjust to and shit. Mm -hmm. But also like, I was kind of uncomfortable in the house at first, bro. Because it didn't Why? feel like my house. You know what I'm trying to say? Like, it just didn't feel like it was mine. Did it, did it feel like you were just staying at, you know, when you go on a vacation? Like a hotel or Airbnb type shit? That's exactly what it felt like. Yeah. yeah. It felt like, like, I didn't even want to use the bathroom, you know? like I'm Really? I'm, yeah. Like, I'm not uncomfortable with, like, using the bathroom if it's not, like, my bathroom. Uh-huh. So... It, it was that, that that took me like a day to get adjusted to like i didn't want to take a share or anything like that the first day and stuff but then we cleaned like we did everything whatever we had to do and shit and like i mean I, i've been chilling now mm -hmm. also the neighborhood like it's a little different a little <laughs> yeah, bit it's a, it's a lot different it's a lot closer to the hood yeah i mean i was i was in the hood before but like i'm a lot closer to the hood hood yeah. so that was me getting adjusted to it as well like trying to like not get paranoid somebody was gonna fucking break in or like mm -hmm. just anything like that i'm still paranoid about that because ju that's just the type of person i am but i mean i'm chilling now it feels good like having my own space like not having to deal with anybody like when i come home and shit and shit slowly like becoming like mine you know what i'm saying like mm -hmm. 
I've never had a table that was mine. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like me, me and Abby's and shit. Of course, like it's not just mine. It's me and Abby's and Julia's and Isabella's. But like, it's crazy, bro. Like I purchased the table, bro. Like, mm-hmm. like, and I was so happy to have it, bro. Like I, we were literally like at the beginning of like moving in and shit. Since we never bought any of those those things and shit, we didn't have it. So we were just sitting on the floor, like eating, like on top of boxes and shit like that. Or sitting on top of the boxes and stuff. And I was getting tight, bro. I was like, fuck, we need a table. We need a fucking table. And furniture be expensive. So fucking motherfucker had to, you know, Facebook marketplace that Facebook marketplace that shit. Yeah. So we got a, you know, like a pretty decent table and shit for a good price. But yeah. How's uh Abby and like Julian Julia is uh uh adjusting? Julia's regular, you know, she's just doing a lot of bad shit right now because Shit is everywhere, so she's grabbing everything, fucking throwing shit. <laughs> I can imagine. Yeah, and, like, since there's stairs, literally, like, as soon as you come into the apartment, uh, we have to, like, block it off. So we're going to fucking, like, basically, like, drill, like, a like, like a, gate? a gate kind of thing. Yeah. So we could open it, but, like, she can't really open it. So, like, when the baby starts crawling, they she can't fall off the stairs, and then Julia doesn't fucking slip. Uh, yeah, it's mad smart, bro. <laughs> so that... And yeah, it's bro. A thing that I fucking realized is how much shit you need in the house, bro. Like what? Like essential shit or bro in general? Bro, just look around you, bro. TV cabinets, couches, curtains, bro. Oh yeah, you, curtains. The shit you don't think Curtain about. Shades. Shit you don't think about, bro. Oh, a fucking an extension cord, like mm-hmm. a fucking fan, a trash can, bro. Yeah. That shit that you look overlook every fucking day bro you know what i'm saying like if you're living with your your parents and shit bro like you look you literally overlook everything that you have in your crib bro yeah you know what i'm saying but everything was worked for and everything was purchased bro at one point and shit and it didn't happen like instantly bro because unless you're fucking rich and shit or you got a good amount of money saved up and stuff you'll get everything as soon as like everything right away and shit right Mm. but you know what i'm saying like fucking slowly Getting everything and stuff, getting couches, the fucking table, getting all the essentials in the kitchen, um, getting all the essentials in the bathroom, mm-hmm. like uh, toilet paper, like not not even the toilet paper, bro, like the shit to hold the toilet paper, mm-hmm. a fucking a plunger, a fucking the, scrub the for scrub, the toilet, yeah. hand soap, like I had all that stuff already, but like that's things you have to buy and shit yeah curtains bro like even curtains bro my house my my apartment didn't have curtains so basically shit. so basically just decorating the house and uh I, like to what you want it to look like yeah it's not even decorating but shit you need no but like, but you know you know what i'm trying to say though yeah yeah but but like also like plates bro plates forks yes bro like you you just have you have that here because your parents got it yeah, bro yeah, yeah. but like if you know what i'm saying if you move out bro your parents are probably going to bless you. Somebody's probably going to bless you and shit. But, like, think about it, bro. Like, if, let's say you dip, yeah. you're, you're going to have only a fucking bed and a couple of mothers in your fucking house. You know what I'm saying, bro? Like, that shit's crazy, bro. Yeah. Like, it's it's fucking crazy. A uh, question I have, uh, I want to ask, like, what's the, what's the goal, like, with the house? How long do you plan on staying there? Yeah. I mean, I honestly want to, like, stay there for a good minute. You mm-hmm. know, like... Obviously, the fucking goal, like, that everybody... I'm pretty sure it's everybody's fucking goal is to buy a fucking house. Yeah, like, of course. Own my own house and shit. But, I mean, I, I'm i learning this little by little. And I feel like a lot of people know this, you know what I'm saying? The older people know this. Everything is steps by steps, bro. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Everything is with patience and consistency, you know what I mean? So it's just baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. Eventually, you'll get from here to over there, right? Yeah. So this is just the first baby step, getting used to living on my own, getting used to being responsible with different bills, taking care of everything. You know, like I, I we fucking called Con Edison, like uh, fucking Nation Grid, but I never done that in my life. I just want to like uh, experience this as much as possible, become a pro at basically living by myself with Abby and shit. And then, like, eventually, you know, when we start making more money with this stuff and with uh, just work in general mm-hmm. combined, I'm pretty sure we'll be able to buy a house in maybe, like, I say two to three years. Yeah. You know, like, 
and my credit will be better at that point. You know, like my car will, I, I never miss a payment for my car and thank God. And then pay off all my credit cards and shit. So I'm pretty sure like everything is with steps, you know what I'm saying? But I, but the goal is in like maybe two to three years to start looking to buying a house, bro. Mm. You know what I mean? What about what about just moving out the that spot just to rent out in a different spot? Like what's like let's say let's say you find another spot, good price, looks looks better, better area. Would you I'm, would you take it? I mean, to be honest, bro, from what I've been seeing from like when I was trying to move out in the beginning and what other people are telling me, bro, my spot is valid because of the price. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like we said that before, and like people in the comments were saying, like, bro, two thousand for one room is crazy. No, yeah, someone said that you could get, you could get, you could rent out a whole house for two thousand in North Carolina. Yeah, so I mean, mine is fifteen hundred, you know, a thousand five hundred for two rooms, kitchen, and you know what I'm saying? Like yeah, that's yeah. that's valid, and a lot of people were telling me that. Not that. yeah, I was, bro. I saw a TikTok. It could have been a joke, but maybe it wasn't. But it was uh, paying two thousand dollars for my for my apartment in New York, right? No, that's not a joke, bro. No, no, no. But just listen, bro. And then it was just it looked like a pantry, and he had a he had to walk outside the hallways to for their bathroom and shower. Bro, I, I don't think, bro. That's dead ass, dead ass. That's that's, that's that's that ass, bro. Like for real, for real. I would but, not. I would not pay two thousand for that shit, bro. Yeah, bro. So. I mean, I feel like I'm blessed right now. Of even course, though, yeah. Even though it's not like the best neighborhood and shit, whatever. Like, at, at least you're not living somewhere in like the Bronx or some shit. Somewhere, somewhere it is where it actually is. Yeah. Dangerous, dangerous, dangerous every fucking day, bro. Yeah. So I mean, that's the only good thing: the fact that we live in the area that we live in. But I mean, I'm I'm glad that you know you're adjusting to your place, and I'm glad the it, it has it hasn't been that bad for a little bit of. My uh, weekly recap. <clears throat> uh, I finally did my taxes. Mm. I told you that uh, I think a couple days ago. I finally did my taxes, y'all, and I was waiting like last minute because I knew I had to pay OD because I because of the money that we made from YouTube last year. But I finally did it. Um, I'm proud of myself because I did it by myself this time and with no help. Usually, I have my my godbrother help me out because I he, for the past two years he's been helping me out and. I I I'd be forgetting about certain things, but this time I just did it by myself. Put in all the information. It was kind of easy, bro. I did it on TurboTax. Literally, you just had to put information about how much you made, and then it all it auto fills your the rest of your information. You could just scan your W two and it does it for you. Oh, that too, bro. And and then also the ten ninety nines. Just had to put in the the right amounts and and automatically, you know, auto filled for you. Auto filled. It, it was mad easy, bro. And and I I used to, I used to um, feel scary scared to put in the wrong thing. Not not even just that, bro, but just scared to do my taxes by myself in general because being audited is not a joke and the IRS is not a joke. So that's that's the only reason why I be getting scared. But I feel like now I kind of have the gist of it. I'll be able to do it on my own for for a little bit until we until like the money starts getting. OD crazy. Mm -hmm. crazy. Also at work I got recognized. Yeah, what do you say? What well, happened? Uh, it, it was a girl. She, uh, it's because I had my um, clown boys, my my I noticed merch on, but I was just uh, I was just doing my regular shit. I was scanning packages, putting them in the carts, putting them on pallets, and then um, I don't know where I just hear uh, all y'all fuck with your podcast, and then bro, and and that in that interaction, I kind of realized how fucking awkward I am and how. Oh, I guess it depends on what they say, bro. Because when she when she said I fuck with, I, oh I, I fuck with your podcast. I was like, oh shit, for real? And then and then I was like, how did you discover the podcast or what video? And then she told me the video. It was a um, Mujer video, Mujer Casos. Mm -hmm. And then uh, after that, it was, it was kind of awkward because I didn't know what to say. So I, I stood kind of silent. And I was like, oh, well, appreciate you, appreciate you for supporting the podcast. Fist bump kept working. And then um, I just asked her if she just watches the clips or... Um, she watches asked, the actual podcast? Yeah, she said... I, I, I think she said... She watches sometimes the podcast. I couldn't really hear because it was fucking loud. You know, I, I don't think it's, it's you. It's like that, that like, I'm not going to lie, guys. Like, that inter those interactions are pretty awkward and stuff. Like, somehow you have to just save it, like, by <laughs> just saying random shit, I feel like. Yeah. Something that I'm still working on I, that I want to work on because I don't, I don't want no awkward reactions when it comes to, or awkward interactions when it comes to, you know, 
supporters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry guys. Sorry, guys, in advance, I guess, because I'm the same way. Sometimes, like, I really don't be knowing what to say. My brain be fried and shit, and, like... I'm just like my brain is trying to figure out, yo, what the fuck do I say next? And I just be like, eh, eh, yo, th- it's probably because I didn't. It's probably because I didn't expect somebody to to recognize me. But I've I've worked because it was a, like an early shift, and I oh, I usually worked early shift that day, and I never got it. nobody's like, early, early shift like like in the morning. Nah, just like the afternoon, four thirty, four thirty oh. shift. But even then, I, I I never I just never expected somebody to to like say that they fuck with the podcast or whatever. That's crazy though, right? Not like, yet. Did I at least feel good. Not yet, it did. I mean. Bro. Getting recognized is crazy, right? Yeah, and I I, I, I didn't get her name. I'll, I'll probably get it next time. But shout out, if you if you do watch the podcast, shout out to you. Appreciate the support, guys. You guys are always fucking. Right, re- I, I fuck with the fact that y'all are not shy to like yes. say something. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, yes. Cause yeah, don't it, don't be discouraged. I'm not saying don't come up to me because because it, it'll be awkward. I'll 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 figure it out. We'll figure it out. To move on to what some fucking weekly recap because this is a big we- weekly recap on both parts. So Facts. two days ago, right or yesterday? Yeah. Yesterday, Friday. Yesterday. Fuck. It's so it's only Saturday, bro. Yeah, bro. So yesterday on uh, what's the, what's the what's the date? That shit felt like it was like two days ago. On April fifth, um, New York got hit with a what four point eight ninety two earthquake? Uh, four point four or four point one. 4, 4.8, 4.8, 4.8, yeah. So we got hit with an earthquake, and I'm not gonna lie, I didn't feel shit. I was locked the fuck out when it happened, bro. So, I, so I, so I woke up to a phone call from my mom, and mad notifications from my mom, my dad, and the group chats that I have, just saying, "Yo, did you feel that?" My, like it, mad shit, bro. And I was kind of not, not that I was tight that you missed it. I was low key tight because I, I I've never felt an earthquake. Not that it's good that I want to feel an earthquake. Yeah. But I, I I missed the earthquake in the morning, bro. I I think I know what you mean. You're getting like FOMO, bro. Like you missed out and shit. Like. Even the second one, we had two earthquakes actually. The second one during six o'clock, I was in the shower, and I told my sister, "Yo, I'm gonna take a shower today, but watch," because my mom was saying. Uh, my, my mom was on the phone with like my aunts and everybody. They're talking about it. And they, they were saying how oh, there's gonna be another earth, earthquake or whatever. That's what the news is saying. Then it happened. But I was in the shower and yeah, I told I my like- sister that yo, watch when it happens again. I'm gonna be in the shower and it happened. Literally like ten minutes after I got out of the shower. What your sister's like yo, it happened? No, my uh, my mom told me and then my brother felt it. He was he was here gaming. Yo, what the fuck? Yeah, bro. Nah, like, honestly, a lot of people, like, are telling me, like, yo, it was scary and shit. It was scary as fuck. But I think certain people felt it worse, mm-hmm. like, than others. Obviously, because of the fucking locations where it happened. Yeah, it was- the, peop- the people in um in Brooklyn and Manhattan felt it a lot worse. It was in Jersey, so oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. so the people in Jersey felt it even worse. Yeah, like, uh, but the way I felt it, I was literally sitting down. I was at work, mm-hmm. uh, about to be in a meeting because I got in trouble at work, whatever. <laughs> but I was sitting outside of the office and shit, waiting to you know get yelled at. So I was just chilling there on my phone and stuff, just being stupid. And out of nowhere, I just feel a vibration. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? And at first, I thought it was the fucking like like some construction because they're always doing some shit in my building, like. Like, that I work at and shit. Like, people are always working on the roof. Yeah, but uh, to the point where the fucking whole bu- building shakes. Hold on, hold on. There'd be trucks and shit. So, at first, like, I thought it was, like, some construction shit going on. But I'm like, bro, I didn't see no construction shit. And I'm pretty sure it's not the roof because it feels, under like, underneath me, right? Yeah. And there was no trucks passing. And then the fucking, like, mueblis and shit started moving and stuff, bro. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? The lamp started going like this and shit, like, ding. Did it, did it, like, did you hear if it was... Bro, it, sound- it, it felt like, you see, like, when we're in the city, right? Mm-hmm. And, like, you see, like, the vents. Yeah. When, when and the trains like, pass? The train, like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's, exactly. that's what it, that's what it, that's what it that's what But, it felt like, like, times, like, like a big version, bro. Yeah. So that's exactly what it felt like. And I felt like vibrations under me. Like, like, bro, it felt like this, bro, like... Oh, Nava, but the whole like, thing, but the whole building. Like, 
But the whole building was shaking. The whole building, bro. Like, oh, nah. just, just imagine the fucking ring light going like this. The fucking, like, that shit shaking. That shit shaking. The TV moving. Like, then my dumb ass. <laughs> fucking knock the fuck out but yeah like i was i was fucking like low-key scared bro and i didn't think much of it i thought i swear i thought it was something else but then abby texted me right away she's like yo you did you feel that i'm like nah i was like was that a fucking earthquake and then i was about to get yelled at and shit they were coming closer and then i was like yo uh to break the ice and shit yo did did you guys feel that and shit, and they were like, "Yeah, we were actually just talking about that, but nobody's evacuating. Get in the office." <laughs> <laughs> you yeah, said that? yeah, 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 but nah, but <laughs> I mean, I know, I know it was a small earthquake, but it's scary to us because no, bro, the, the last earthquake that happened in New York was back in like 2011, 2012, and it was small too. I didn't feel that one either, Me either, because I was outside when it happened. But either way. It's the fact that they're not really common out here is, is crazy. And I'm glad it wasn't like a big, big magnitude earthquake. Bro, and a l- little bit like uh, Abby's side of the story, right? So she told me that like when it happened, she was in the room feeding the baby and shit. And like Julie was fucking running around causing havoc and shit. Yeah. And like she was in like the kitchen area. Julia? Yeah. And then out of nowhere, like. It started happening, and Julie was like, "What is that? What is that, mommy? What's happening? What is that?" She said that, and then like, bro, she started like getting scared and stuff, and she ran to Abby and started hugging Abby like, "Mommy, what is it?" And then Abby was like, "Oh, it's okay, it's okay." And then like, she started feeling it, and apparently, it started getting worse. That's why I'm saying like, other places felt felt it way different, bro. Because I'm in a fucking like big ass building, bro. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like. Abby was in the fucking house. Other people were in houses, bro. And, like, the fucking in the city, bro. Like, you could see the fucking the building. Buildings yeah, shaking. like. And my building's low to the ground, but it's, like, fucking big. You know what I'm saying? Damn, if she felt it, bro, if she, if she felt it. That bad. It was probably bad where I, where I was, but yeah, yeah you was probably just, yeah. Rocky was probably scared, but <laughs> my my dumb ass was just knocked out. Nah, bro. It could have been if it was. Your dumb bad, ass was a heavy. Yo, you could have died, it, bro. If it was bad, I could have died, and I wouldn't have known. That bro, blood, blood woke up to a pop smoke concert. <laughs> Yo, what nah, the crazy thing is, like, uh, I I asked my parents where they were in all situation. Obviously. They were working. My brother was working. My mom was working. My my dad was working, and my sister was at school. Yeah. So my dad, he said that he was in the bathroom when it happened. Oh shit! He was in the bathroom. He was in he was in the bathroom, and out of nowhere, he just sees he just feels shaking. He's like, "What the fuck?" He was confused. Mm-hmm. And then when he got out the when he got out the um the bathroom, everybody everybody saw. was like, "Yo, it was an earthquake. Did you feel that?" And then and then obviously tested the chat. My mom was working. She said that she started getting anxiety because she gets scared really easily when it comes to stuff like this. My sister was in school. She felt it uh, in her class. Everybody felt it. And then apparently some people in school, they didn't feel it. I don't know how. Maybe maybe certain people on the, on the first floor didn't feel mm. it. But that's crazy what, how, like, just knowing how where everybody was in the... It's just scary. It's scary, bro. But guys, 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 guys. I know it wasn't a fucking natural disaster and stuff. Like... <laughs> Fuck y'all saying like, oh, why is New York overreacting? I saw a lot of fucking clips about that shit. I saw a lot of shit on social media. Yo, why everybody from New York overreacting and shit? Like, every, everybody in Cali laughing at us because they have that shit every day type bro, shit. Bro, like, but the thing is, is that, bro, New York does not get that that often, bro. Like we said, bro, that shit, the last time we got one, bro, was literally 13 years ago, bro. So we don't experience that shit every fucking day. So when... That shit happens is like, all right, bro, like, what the fuck is really going on? Yeah. But what I'm going into is, like, it's crazy how a fucking natural disaster could low-key happen, some natural occurrence and shit, mm-hmm. like a tornado, fucking... Hurricane. Hurricane. Tsunami. Uh, tsunami, earthquake, fucking whatever. And we might be split up, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. family-wise. Yeah. Family wise, you know what I mean? Like I was at work like twenty minutes away from Abby, Julie, and the baby. Everybody bro, else was separate. Literally was separate. Alone. You were yeah. home alone and shit, bro. Everybody's separate, bro. That's the most scary for me, bro. Like the whole like I so 
how the fuck, where are we going, where are we going to meet up, who's going to pick up what, what if you don't even have a fucking car, like, that's fucking scary. Nah, bro. yeah, my mom, my mom said that as soon as it happened, the first thing she thought of was, was us, like, me and my siblings, hmm. and obviously my dad, because, like you said, we were all separated, and it, it could have been bad, it could have been bad. Bro, it's 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 scary, bro. Like, and also the, the uh, I, I know the the one in Taiwan that happened too. It was really really bad. What was yeah, it? Seven point what? That was above seven seven something. Yeah, I don't. I think seven point two, seven point four. I, I could I be think wrong. I wrote it down, bro. Seven point four magnitude. Yeah, so. yeah, that's crazy. And the crazy thing is that, bro, that that was that was that was one of the strongest earthquakes that happened. Uh, since the last like twenty five years, bro. And think about it, bro. Think about it. We had a four point eight, right? And it felt like that. Mm-hmm. Now imagine how the fucking seven point four felt like. You saw bro. the videos or not? I only seen one video, bro. I'm not gonna lie. So look, this is this is one. I think this has. Multiple. Bro, you see that shit? You see that? Does that have different POVs or I think so, oh. yeah. You know what's scarier? The fucking alarm. Yeah, bro. Yo, look. Yeah, yeah, that that that's what I saw. Yeah. And then look. Bro. And, and you know what's crazy? Like, sh- shout out to like all the f- uh, physicists, uh, fucking architects, engineers that for, are- for for fucking creating like the buildings in a certain way, bro. Because in Taiwan, right? Like, yeah. or in, in a lot of different countries, bro, they have buildings built a certain way. But I think in Taiwan, there's a specific building where um, there's this like. Uh, Big ass, heavy ass ball in the middle, right? Okay. And like it's it's hung by like springs and shit or something like that, or metal like fucking wires and shit. Mm-hmm. And basically, like it's meant for, like, if there's ever a fucking earthquake or whatever like that, it's supposed to have it centered, bro. So like the building will move, but it's never gonna fucking like tip over and shit or like fall. Yeah. Which is fucking insane, it's, bro. It's, it, there's one also in Mexico, and I, I want to get actually get into that because I I wrote um. It's a topic about a, an earthquake that happened in, in Mexico before. Oh, shit. Multiple. Well, there was two earthquakes that happened before, like the same day or whatever. But I want to talk about the one that happened in 1985. Mm. You remember that one or not? Nah? No, I don't. Nah? Like, mm. you don't remember hearing about it? Your mom talking about it? Nobody? Probably did, but I don't remember right now. But it happened in, um, <clears throat> it happened on September September 19th, specifically on 1985. And obviously, it was really, really bad. It was a fucking 8.1 magnitude earthquake. God so damn. It was, it was it was bad, bro. It was one of the worst natural disasters in the country's history. And it was estimated that 35,000 people lost their lives. And over 700,000 people lost their homes. Over 30,000 structures throughout the city were severely damaged. And 412 buildings completely destroyed. I also have a video of like uh, when it happened on the news. 
And it looks fucking insane. Yeah, bro. Like, it, it cuts off as soon as, I guess, it, I, I, I think the, the place tore down or whatever, but... Yeah. Bro. Está temblando, está temblando un poquitito. No se asusten, vamos a quedarnos. Les doy la hora. Siete de la mañana, dieci... Ah, Chihuahua. Siete de la mañana, diecinueve minutos, cuarenta y dos segundos. Tiempo del centro de no, México. Yo, you see the top? Sigue temblando un poquitito, pero pues vamos a tomarlo con una gran tranquilidad. Bugging, bro. How can you be calm in that situation, bro? Para poder oh, shit. Yeah, bro. And then for 90 seconds. Shh, the fucking earth was shaking. Yeah, bro. That shit's scary. And I, and I remember... um. For 90 seconds is a long time. Yeah, and... Uh, I also saw. Uh, I'll put videos up um, of like how the the place was looking like. Ocho de la mañana, tres minutos. Ocho tres. Tenemos en la línea al licenciado Jacobo Salud. Que adelante, licenciado. Le escuchamos aquí en W. Todo el recorrido ha sido perfectamente normal. No he visto ninguna alteración. Quizá un poquito más de tránsito que el acostumbrado y las caras, las caras de estupor de la gente que viene manejando sus automóviles. No veo nada anormal tampoco. El tránsito es eh, fluido. Los semáforos están funcionando en paseo de la reforma. Ay, yo eh, sentí ese temblor muy prolongado, pero no tan fuerte como aquel que tiró el ángel. Lo sentí muy prolongado ese temblor, pero como que nos trató suavecito, como que nos andaba metiendo como en una cunita, ¿no? En paseo de la reforma veo también todo perfectamente normal, los edificios altos de los lados los encuentro normal, hay colas para tomar los camiones para la gente que va a trabajar. Eh, seguir informando. Correcto, licenciado Jacobo Sanzudov, que estaremos pendientes. Estoy enfrente del hotel continental y estoy situado frente al estado de Cautemo, que está elevando un helicóptero en este momento. Varios pisos del hotel continental se derrumbaron. El edificio de la reforma 185 está casi totalmente destruido. En la avenida Insurgente, el, el edificio de seis pisos que está junto a la gasolinería en este crucero, también tiene todos los vidrios rotos, toda la gente está colocada, se acabó, se acabó totalmente un edificio que se derrumbó. Y dentro se derrumbaron dos o tres pisos, cayeron como sándwich uno sobre otro ahí. Dígame, señor, ¿qué es lo que pasó, señor? Eh, un derrumbe de un edificio ahí nada más, este señor Jacob. ¿Hay heridos? Parece que si ignoramos, hay heridos. Le ruego que no, que no vaya usted a salir de su casa, no hay necesidad. De... El Hotel Century, me dice un señor, que el Hotel Century de seis pisos se cayó. También lo que era la Dirección Federal de Seguridad aquí frente al Monumento de la Revolución. It was fucking crazy, and it's crazy that also a couple years later, 2017, on the same day, another one happened. A horrible Mexico one. as well. Yeah, yeah, bro. Well, what I want to get into that with uh, was a story that my mom told me. Like, she said that she vividly remembers that day. So she was only five years old, so you can imagine five five years old. She she remembers it, so I guess it was that traumatizing Tra yeah, that traumatic. she fucking remembers it. But she said that on that day it was in the morning. I think I think it was around like seven seven a.m. I believe my grandpa he had left for work like around five a.m. To, uh, an office job in in Mexico City, like you know how like in fucking Manhattan, the big ass buildings, the people that be in offices. He was working there, and obviously he was far away from where my mom was, and he had left my mom sleeping. She said she was that, by herself in the house. Yeah, she was by herself. I think the only person that was in the house was I think the landlord, which was a lady, and she was showering in the morning when it happened. My mom said that what woke her up was. The windows slamming shut and the doors. So like she woke up and everything was moving back and forth. And then the doors was just like boom, boom, boom. And obviously she was scared. She was crying. And then the the landlord lady, she was made a shower. So she just left the shower with just a robe, fucking uh, some towels. And then she picked up my mom up and they just waited outside. And then she, my mom told me that one of my uncles, my mom's cousin, had remembered that my grandpa was in the city working and that she was alone. So him panicking, he ran to her house, but 
in the midst of everything, the earthquake was so bad that as he was running, he was tripping over himself. And luckily, when when he got to the house, she was safe. Everybody was safe. And then as soon as it was over, they, like they obviously saw the news and saw like all the fucking the devastation, all the fucking destruction that it had, bro. But just imagine being five, being five and going through that shit, bro. Nah, yeah, I'll be fucking shitting my pants, bro. Yeah, I was shitting my pants right now, like. And it was that small. Yeah, and it was small, and like nothing really happened, bro. But like, I can only imagine being a, a young guy's bro, basically almost a baby. Yeah. And that shit happening to you, bro. <laughs> Yo, nah. I mean, a lot of things have been happening and shit. We have been saying like, oh, um, it's like it feels like something new every fucking week. Yeah. Next week is the eclipse. Or two in two days, actually. It's on Monday. Yeah, so something has been happening literally every fucking week, bro. Yeah. So I don't know what's gonna be the after the eclipse or after that or after that, but this year has been full of events and shit. It only makes you feel like something like this is leading up to something, you know what I mean? Like which is like kinda scary. Do you think it's really leading up to something though? I mean, I find it weird the fact that like like all right, there's a lot of earthquakes all the time and shit, right? But I find it weird that there was a big earthquake in Taiwan, which is, like, across the world and shit. And one of the most randomest spots ever, which is New York and shit. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I don't know, bro. It feels weird the fact that it happened in New York, bro. The fact that it's, like, not, like, happening all the time here, it feels weird. Mm. Like, yeah, yo, uh, you know what? To be fair, yeah, you have a point. Because even... This whole the world's gonna end conversation has been a thing since my mom was a fucking jit. From from when she was mad little, many people would say the world was gonna end. From when it, tw- 2000, the world was gonna end. 2012, the world was gonna end. You know, in 2012, I was like actually scared, bro. Nah, bro, I was scared too because of the movie. That shit paranoid me. Bro, not, not even just the movie, bro. Like, people were saying that shit and like the Mayan calendar or whatever. And nah, stuff. yeah, yeah, yeah. And like, I remember that day, like, it was the day before, I guess... Uh, like Christmas break or something like that? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, the day before Christmas break. And, like, I was telling my friends, like, yo, um, hopefully I'll see you and shit. Damn. Yeah, I was like, you know, like, yo, see you next year. Or, like, you know that stupid shit? Yeah. But, like, I, I was, we were also, like, it felt like the last goodbye, bro. So I was kind of, like, scared. But I'm like, yo, yeah, hopefully we see you, you know? Like, type shit. I was mad shook, bro, like, that ass. And then the day came and it was, like... But nothing I want to get into. So yesterday, right? Yesterday we watched no Thursday. On Thursday we watched Godzilla X Kong: The New oh, Empire. Oh. And I want your I want your uh, thoughts now because I know honest, what, honest, honest, honest thoughts because I know when we got out the theater you were saying some stuff. I don't know if you still are standing by that. Just talk your shit, bro. All right. So I'm gonna see if I can try to convince you otherwise. All right. So I'm not gonna lie, like. I'll forever not be entertained by monsters fighting on screen and shit like Godzilla, King Kong. You know what I'm saying? Like a lot of these names are like familiar to me and shit. So it's like I just love seeing them on screen fight each other and shit. Like that shit's always lit, bro. Yeah. But this movie did feel a little of Avengerish or uh Marvelish in a way where it's like the comedy like. Mm-hmm. Like oh uh, Fucking That sense of like Oh it's family oriented Type of fucking movie You know what I'm saying okay. So like I did feel that A little bit with this Fucking movie You know I, I felt like it was Catering to like kids As much as it is To an adults okay. So it was kind of like A overall like Type of movie right Okay And I and that that's what Fucking Marvel does Marvel does that a lot Cause they try to be funny They try to talk Like involve kids In a way You know what I'm saying Like they're trying to just get the whole like audience and stuff, right? Okay. So I felt like that for this movie, and I also felt like, uh, like they do give King Kong a little bit too much, like too much attention. And I know you have a theory about that and stuff. Yeah. Like I feel like they just because he's honestly not a strong character at all. Uh huh. Like he's just smart and shit like that, but like in comparison to the other fucking monsters, bro, he he'll get clapped, bro. Yeah. So, yeah, that, I mean, if I had to rate it out of 10, I would give it a 7. A 7? Yeah. Okay. Are you only rating it a 7 because Godzilla was barely in the movie? No. 
Because I, I like I like the movie, but... Are you rating a 7 because of the human characters? Uh, No. The, so, the, the reason why I'm rating it a 7 is because if it wasn't so like a family movie, I think I would have enjoyed it a little bit more. Mm. But I felt like it was just too much. Like, everybody's doing that, bro, nowadays. Like, I feel like all the big, like, mainstream movies and shit, like, they want to do that, bro. Like, they want it to be, a, a like, a, like, oh, yeah, let's, 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 it's like a family movie or whatever, like, where the kids can enjoy it. Oh, my gosh, King Kong. Mm. Oh, my gosh, Godzilla. Look, mommy, it's Godzilla. And then, like, th- then you got the fucking, the OGs, the, the older heads, the yeah. people our age enjoying it because we fuck with it because it's like yo fucking godzilla king kong whatever like we heard about the og movies whatever you got the og people who liked it because godzilla and king kong like they've been fucking with it since they were young Mm -hmm. but it still got that fucking like oh my gosh mommy look kong oh my gosh what's gonna happen to kong like shut the fuck up bro like you know what i'm trying to say or you know you don't know what i'm trying to say Okay, okay. So you just want a more uh dark uh dark take on on Bro on like like action, bro. Like like for real like not a, like bro like like fucking they get slashed or some shit like you could see like Kong with fucking blood on him like or like he gets damaged and shit or like you know you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm trying Cuz they're I'm- monsters, bro. They're fucking monsters. More people dying or something, bro. Like, bro, everybody was dying. <laughs> Yesterday, so the 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 people dying, but there were in the movie they destroyed three major cities and fucking buildings. Yeah, but they they should show like like how they did in uh, minus one. You see how like, bro, it was like clearly like. Ah, I see, I see. You should have said that. You, you see what I'm that. trying to yeah, say, bro? Yeah, like. Yeah. The way they did minus one, where it's like a fucking monster, bro. It's a fucking monster. Yeah, you know what I mean, like, bro, like, yeah, bro, you said like, like fifty times, bro. I know, I'm sorry, but, but no, nah, I, I see, I see, like, I see what you mean. The way, all right, so this is the way I see it, bro. I read it. No, don't, don't cut that out. Say, uh, leave the whole part. You calling me out for that? No, nah, I, I, don't worry, bro. I rated it a seven point five out of ten, but the, the only reason I didn't li- really like it was because of the human characters. I I enjoyed all of the the uh action. monster action whatever regardless if it's uh marvelish or if it's for kids I like I loved it bro bro the the scene where it, it was just Kong and no the, dialogue when it was Kong the jit and him versing the other uh other apes him discovering bro when it was just Kong by himself I loved that shit bro No yeah that was good that shit was good and the, the, the only thing that I didn't like was the whole um the girl that was death she kind of she kind of like looked like fucking Avatar at one point. That I was kind of like, what the fuck are we watching? <laughs> Boy, I, I, that aside, bro. Fucking my life. It was a good. It was. I think it was a good kaiju movie. It's not my favorite out of the MonsterVerse. My favorite would still be King of the Monsters or the 2014 bro, Godzilla. You see, you see, you see that movie was even different, bro. Yeah, I know. That was a monster movie, bro. Yeah, a fucking monster movie. This shit. Was a fucking marvelish movie, bro. Okay, I uh, bro. yeah, I, I see, I see, I see. And, and I agree with you, bro. Yeah. Like I've been saying that since since the first Godzilla. Yeah, we don't need humans in the movie, bro. Nah, yeah, of course, of course. Like we don't need any humans in the movie for it to be a good movie, bro. Maybe, maybe some human scenes, cause like obviously, like it's our fucking planet. We're gonna be like, yo, what the fuck? Yeah, you know what I mean. But like, bro, <sighs> just like. We don't need no story for the humans and shit. Like, even though minus one, they did a good job of including the humans and stuff mm-hmm. somehow. It, it it just depends how they go about the humans. That's literally it. Yeah. But other than that, I I I, I love the movie, and you complained about them showing Godzilla. I mean, um, King Kong a lot, Kong a lot in the movie, which I I love both of them. Godzilla, Kong doesn't matter to me, but. I just think the reason why they're showing Kong a lot in the movie, and theory, maybe and maybe, and maybe they're gonna be showing him a lot more in in other future movies, is because they're probably setting it up for him to die, for Kong to die, and God Godzilla has to eventually end up uh, killing a powerful ass monster, bro. 
like what destroyer is, is that is that the, the that's, that's yeah yeah yeah, that's yeah it, like that's destroyer or maybe some some other some other fucking space powerful space godzilla that's another guy another powerful ass monster bro because if, if we're honest kong is not that powerful he needs a gauntlet to at least try to keep up with godzilla if you would have went against uh what, what uh, no no king uh king adora oh bro. he would have got clapped bro easily so that's what i'm saying i feel like the reason why they're setting all this shit out the reason why kong is getting so much attention is because they want to set it up for his death yes bro that's that's the only thing that makes sense you know and uh i don't know if we're the only ones or like Godzilla fans are the only ones who think of that way about Kong. Like, yo, he's just like, like, bro, like, shut the fuck up, bro. Like, I, I, love, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I love Kong though. That's I, I don't, thing. I don't, I don't know. If that's like just like people hating on it or whatever. But like the way I see it, right? The way I see it is that Godzilla is the main character, bro. Yeah, Godzilla is the main character. Like Kong was just kind of like a fucking addition to it because the hype of Godzilla versus Kong yeah. and shit. But it's it's Godzilla, bro. You know what I'm saying? Godzilla's the fucking main character, bro. He's the main fucking. He's the first. He's the first word, the first name on the movie, like movie title card. You know what I mean? He's the fucking one, bro. He's him, literally. Yeah. So I don't know, bro. Like, but we're, 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 it, it's just it's just because I'm a fucking hype beast, bro. Like I just like the strongest people, the fucking like the most powerful people and shit I, I don't like the fucking side characters you know what I'm trying to say like it's just me being that, that triggers me bro I, that triggers me OD, it, it's bro. just me being that type of person bro you know what I mean like I like the Supermans like the Godzillas like the fucking the Thors you know what I mean I feel like I feel like sometimes you prefer you, you prefer action and shit over story even if it's if they show you good action and it's, and it's a shit story you probably will like it uh if if it, if I'm if I'm going into the movie expecting action and they don't deliver that, that's when I get tight. That's what I'm talking about, bro. Because I'm not... Bro, they delivered the action, bro. Okay. You know, it wasn't bad action. I'm not... I was not going into Godzilla vs. Kong for the fucking story, bro. Okay. I was looking... I was going into the movie to see monsters fight. Okay. Some of my favorite monsters that I know fight bro okay. that's that's just it that's that's what i that's what i was going into bro like a kid like just wanting to see fucking monsters fight now if i'm going to see a movie like like dune mm-hmm. i i might not even think about the action bro I, i'm just going in there for the story the characters and shit like that you know it's different movies and shit okay i i bro i rate movies differently depending on what the genre is what the movie is supposed to be about like with the trailer and shit, you know what I mean? If I go for a fucking mystery movie, I'm not expecting action, bro. <laughs> okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm not, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, I'm expecting, like, it to be a good fucking mystery, bro. Yeah. If it's a horror movie, yeah, I'm expecting yeah. to get scared. Yeah. And if I don't get scared, that's what they're showing. That's what they're classifying their movie as, a fucking horror movie. Yeah. And if they can't deliver what the fuck they're claiming they are, bro, then they're not a good movie, bro. Okay. You know what I'm trying to yeah, say, bro? Yeah, yeah. Like, if we put out, let's say we make a fucking movie, right? Mm-hmm. First time directors, whatever. First time movie makers. And we label our movie as a freaking comedy. Mm-hmm. And that shit is not funny. <laughs> that shit's ass. Yeah, you're right. Regarding how much we like the characters or how much, like, fucking whatever, bro. If it's not good, then it's not good. The next thing I want to talk about is just is, is the nerd talk, bro. It's it's unserious as well, bro. It's something that I wanted to talk about last week, but I just didn't didn't get to it. Um, because we talked about so much. So, a couple weeks ago, uh, Dragon Ball Sparking Zero the gameplay came out. I don't Sparking know if you've seen Zero. It. Yeah, basically Budokai Tenkaichi Four. No way. You haven't seen it yet? No, bro. I, I show you some some quick shit, bro. I gotta just. What? Yeah. Bro. It looks like it, and it's gonna play like it and shit like that. Something, something real quick. No, oh, I won't be losing this one, Vegeta. Yeah! <laughs> 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 
But bro, all I gotta say, bro, I if it looks like that, bro, bro, that's 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 real gameplay, bro. It's official. They dropped it, and you you, you know the the infamous the 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 beam the beam. Uh, what, what is it? Um, fuck, what's it called? Wait, what, what, what? When you clash beams, and then you have to... Oh, yeah, 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 you with the fucking joystick and shit. Yes, bro, so they're bringing that back. Beam I don't... clash, beam clash, yes, or whatever? Yes, yes, yes. So I don't know if it's going to be the same thing again. They might uh, change Do the to, fucking to, button. To, to button mashing to, to, to lower the risk of like you fucking breaking your analog stick. But all I got to, all I gotta say with that is... I'm a cook motherfuckers in that shit, bro. I don't give a fuck, bro. I used to play that shit all the time as a kid on my PlayStation 2, Budokai Take IH3. And I remember I remember getting cooked by my older cousin. And then I got cooked so bad that I got tight. I ended up fucking playing. I, I, I ended up no-lifing that game, getting good at the game, and ended up obviously beating him. But, bro, I'm going to cook motherfuckers. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to be posting gameplay on that shit. And we're going to have a tournament with that, bro. I don't care. Yo, that game looks fucking insane. It literally looks like like if you were watching the show, bro, and you were watching a fight, bro. Yeah. Like, damn. That, 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 bro, damn. So yeah. much fucking nostalgia. It literally right looks there. like the old game, but just with way, way better, better graphics. graphics, bro. Yo, the, I remember that game because it had so many fucking characters from. Everything. Like, yeah, I had everything. Dragon bro. Ball characters, Z characters, GT, GT bro. bro. And this time is gonna have super characters. I saw the lit, bro. I saw, I saw the like uh, when when the gameplay or whatever ended, it showed like a, a hexagon. It was mad and characters. It was mad characters, bro. It obviously showed a few, but it was a lot that you had to unlock. Obviously, through playing the story mode, you get the characters, but it's a lot of characters, bro. I don't give a fuck what anybody says, bro. I'm playing. I don't give a fuck if he's the like god tier like character or low tier character i'm playing with um uh, super saiyan 4 gogeta i don't give a the, fuck the red, the red one the red one bro from gt yeah because i don't give a fuck there's a lot of people who hate gt but i love the transformations bro i've i love how they look i love the fucking like just the way they look bro it's so fucking yeah. fire to me bro the red like that they have the fucking tails they look like monkeys and shit like and then when they turn into Gogeta, bro, like that shit is no, fire. No, it was one thing that they didn't show that I know is gonna be in the game, the the fusion, uh, the fusion dances that you could do. So if oh, you, with like different characters and you trans. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. if let, let's say you you chose um, Goku and Vegeta, you could during mid gameplay you could obviously do some fucking buttons to to, to, to fuse. Mm. So I can't wait for that. My character. Uh, uh, well, uh, my fault. Another thing that. I used to like about that shit is that you could transform mid mid yeah. match, bro. Yeah, that too. Mid you're, uh, you're obviously gonna be able to do that too, bro. I remember Frieza would go from Frieza to like uh, his second form, his third form, then the the big one. Yeah, and like I remember that shit, bro. Then he would go to like the white guy. Yeah, the final form. And then fucking Goku, same thing. I remember like loving transforming to Super Saiyan three, bro. Like, yeah, that's far. Be- the people that I'm gonna be playing with, Vegito. Doesn't matter if it's blue, regular, like regular base form or Super Saiyan. I love Vegito. I loved him since day one since I played the game, bro. His fucking uh, his the way he fights is so cool. And I'm gonna be playing with uh, Gohan uh, Super Saiyan two. And I, I don't know what other one I used to I used to spam a lot, but there was there was a couple I used to spam a lot. But I just can't wait, bro. That that just that I, I just need to get that get that off my chest because I've seen a lot of people say, "Oh, uh, uh, when it comes out, I'm gonna be cooking, motherfuckers, bro." Yeah. But I don't give a fuck, bro. No one's cooking nobody, bro. Nah. Yeah, people, you gonna be nah, nice bro. at that game, bro? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna make sure I'm nice at that game, bro. I'm gonna make sure. You have to that ass like no life that shit, bro. I bro, cause I. I'm I'm barely good at fucking Dragon Ball Fighters. I'm only good with one character, but this game is one character is one. This game is one the game that I actually want to do good. Try at. try and be good at. Yeah, it. bro. Damn, bro, you sound I felt you sound like me like back in the day with Call of Duty, bro. That's how I felt like with Call of Duty and shit. Like wanting to be like, like oh, I want to be good as fuck. I want to be known as like a good Call of Duty player and shit. Like yeah, yeah it's just you gave me that vibe and stuff. So whoever fucking wants to challenge me, we're gonna fucking do a tournament. We, we should we should do that, guys. Maybe if you guys fuck with gaming or some shit, or if y'all even get the game, we could fuck around and do some shit with like we play with you guys, we Man. play against you guys, and it's like a money prize or something. All right, guys, we're back from that little break, and uh, you already know your favorite segment. Uh, so, somebody said we should we should call. 
the scary spooky segment, y'all favorite segment. So welcome back to y'all yeah, favorite, favorite segment. segment. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, uh, he's gonna start it off. I'm gonna talk about the Codex Gigas, aka the Devil's Bible. Okay. So uh, keep in mind, this is a um, a book written in the ter- 13th century. Mm-hmm. So basically, like um, the reason why it's called the Devil's Bible, right? Yeah. So uh, the legend goes that there was a monk known as Herman the Recluse. And basically, he was part of a monastery in the Czech Republic. Okay. And he, for some reason, he was going to get ex- executed or starved to death. Uh-huh. And basically, what he, sa- he said to the monks was like, yo, if you guys spare my life, um, I promise I'll, I'll write a book with basically all of the earthly knowledge and secrets of the world, right? And they basically told him, okay. We'll spare your life, and we won't execute you. You won't get ex- executed, but with one condition, that you have to write the book in one night. How, so, how long was this book? So keep in mind, he said all of earthly knowledge and life secrets, bro. Yeah. So, bro, I'm pretty sure it was going to be a long-ass book. So the reason why they told him to do it in one night is so he wouldn't make it, bro. Like, they were going to execute him, right? So he was like, okay, no problem. So he he was writing for a little bit. He was he got started on the book, but obviously he quickly realized that it's impossible. It's kind of, yeah, it's it's impossible, bro. So he resorted to making a deal with the devil. So he told him he asked the devil like in exchange for my soul, help me write this book in one night. So the next day, the book was created. It was this huge ass book. It weighed 80, 80 kilograms, bro. That's like over 100 pounds. And it was big as fuck, bro. Like, it, you needed two people to carry it. And it's like the size of your fucking table. Like, it's Damn, big. Damn, what the fuck? Like, it's big as hell. So, uh, and it has a lot of illustrations of, like, the devil and shit. I'm going to show you what it looks like. I'm going to show you what the book looks like and, like, the illustrations. Mm-hmm. But... I would say, where did this whole... Th- like legend or where did that whole thing start from or come from, from yeah, so that specifically or so this is from the Czech Republic so it's over there like in um by Russia Asia nah, yeah, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, okay. yeah so so that's where it originated from yeah, and okay. it's it's a real life book bro that that book is real it's okay. called the actual name is called the Codex Gigas okay that's the name of the book and it doesn't really have like nothing like Oh, no life secrets or whatever. Just a lot of like religious teachings from back in the day. A lot of uh, philosophical teachings. Um, a lot of people talking about like the cosmos and shit like that. So I had basically no new new knowledge. But it's just the fact that it was written in one day? That was weird or about one it. Night? Yeah, yeah. That's what was weird about it. And also the fact that um, they tested it out. They try to see... Um, basically remake the book uh-huh. and they realized that it would take 20 years of continuous writing for them to recreate the book. Continuous writing, bro. Yeah. And it was made with like over like 100 animals. Like, like bro, you can't make that shit in one night, bro. Yeah, bro. You know what I'm saying? So that's why they say like, that's the whole legend behind that book and yeah. why they call it the Devil's Bible because it's basically impossible for a single man to have written that book in a single night, right? Yeah. And uh, like I said, there's no new teachings in it, but um, there was a point in time where there was a fire. There was a fire that was going on wherever it was being kept and shit. And they they basically try to rescue it because it's like part of history or whatever or like whatever. And 10 pages ended up going missing. From the book. Yeah, so what they're saying is that maybe... Like everything else is like no knowledge and no new lo- new knowledge, but those ten pages were or something ma- new. Were was maybe like some actual like knowledge that we're not supposed to know about. Fuck. It also has like um, uh, enchantments and like fucking magic and shit, like mm-hmm. witchcraft and shit. It also has that in the book and shit. But I'm gonna show you what it looks like now. Yeah. And the picture is pretty creepy. Like you're gonna see it, bro. That's 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 a page or that is that That's yeah, that's a that's a, a book that's a page in the book. The fuck? 
Yeah, but you see how big it is? Yeah. Tell me that doesn't look creepy as fuck. Bro, yes. It's huge, bro. Look. But it's creepy as fuck, bro. Like, nah. But yeah, that that was the whole legend with the whole Devil's Bible and shit. Of where it even came from, because that's a real life book, bro. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. We could see it if we wanted to. So where the fuck did it come from? Why the fuck is it a thing? Why the fuck is it so big? Nobody knows those questions, but that's how it came about and shit. Yo, that's crazy. It's, right? it's all it, the 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 things that come from back in the day, like for example, the pyramids, shit that we can't really explain. It's, it's always like it always it always has you questioning how things were back then, or like what were they thinking back then, or where did it come from, or yeah. why did they build it, or why did they make it and shit. But speaking of the devil and shit, right? This kind of leads to my next. Thing that I'm gonna call, like talk about, which is very very short. Mm-hmm. It's a small video. It's like a short video, but it's basically the Usher Devil video. The Usher Devil video. The fuck is that? Usher, you know who Usher? I is. I know who Usher is, but I don't know what like I never I never heard of this video before. Yeah, so I'm gonna play it right now. But it's it's like it's been going viral lately because people like are like bro, because of what's going on with, with Diddy, Diddy the Diddy situation. What's going on with? Basically, a lot of people getting exposed for selling their soul or being part of a, like a, some satanic shit. Yeah. But basically, look. Heart is beating really, really fast. But it's good. It's, uh, it beats with passion. And um, I'm very honored to be able to receive this amazing award from the, de- from, from the depths of my soul. From the depths from, from the depths of my soul. You was going to say it right the first. Heart is beating really, really fast. But it's good. It's, uh, it beats with passion. And um, I'm very honored to be able to receive this amazing award from the devil. From- nah, bro. What happened? He what happened? I said devil, bro. And he tried to like, oh. Uh, Try to downplay it, say that he didn't say devil. From the depths of my heart or whatever. But you could clearly hear him say from the devil. From the devil. Yeah. And we all know, like, the the basic knowledge of a lot of celebrities have sold their soul, obviously, for fame and fortune and course, shit. yeah. So, maybe he was another another one of them and shit. And it's clear as fucking day right there. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised. Because he has, he has ties with Diddy as well. Diddy as well. See what and I'm saying? And Diddy's a fucking scumbag, bro, so... Yeah, bro. And uh, speaking of like this whole Hollywood shit, um, I know last the last couple of episodes we were talking about like how fucked up Hollywood is, the the fucked up things that happen to young actresses, young yeah. actors and stuff. And what I'm gonna talk about right now is a uh, a movie that a lot of people know that you guys might not know the backstory of like uh, how it was made or what happened to the actors and stuff, but it's some fucked up shit happened in this movie, bro. The Wizard of Oz. I don't know if you know any fucked up shit. That, like the classic it. one? Yes, the 19, 1939 one, yeah. Yo, nah, I don't know anything about it. Okay, so I'm going to start off with uh, the main actress who plays Dorothy. Her name is uh, Judy Garland. Mm-hmm. And um, she was casted as Dorothy when she was 16 years old. And from the start, when she was casted, the mistreatment, the abuse kind of started. Fuck. So when she was casted, the executives told her that she had to lose 12 pounds for the role, right? And she was able to lose the 12 pounds. Damn, body shaming and shit. Exactly. So she was able to lose the pounds, but apparently the studio executives were allegedly referring her to as a fat little pig with pigtails behind her back. Which is like fucked up. Obviously, she's only 16, bro. Yeah. And uh, throughout the entirety of the production, the executives were obsessed with her weight. So she was put on a strict diet of just eating chicken, uh, chicken soup coffee and 80 cigarettes a day 80 cigarettes a day because they wanted to hurt basically her to lose the her appetite to eat anything 80 cigarettes a day is 80 crazy, cigarettes a day bro. bro yes bro i'm pretty sure a packet doesn't even have 80 in it nah bro so you can imagine and then they will also give her some narcotics uh prescribed from uh, by doctors and stuff to ease her appetite same thing with giving her some other some other drug and even the custom designers they purposely made her outfits smaller smaller and tight 
to basically keep her slim figure. So, yeah, you can imagine, like, just how traumatizing it is for a 16-year-old. You're already getting body shamed, and yeah. it's in the industry and stuff. Bro, and drugged, and being forced to, like, mm -hmm. kind of fuck up your body, bro, for the role. She had even said it herself. From the time I was 13, there was a constant struggle between MGM. MGM is, like, the company that, that managed her. Um, with MGM and me, whether, whether or not to eat, how much to eat, what to eat, I remember this more vividly than anything else in my childhood. Fuck, bro. Yeah, bro. And uh, she also had to take adrenaline shots in order to work constantly for 48 plus hours. There was also reports that uh, uh, allegedly she was harassed by the actors that played the munchkins. Some other studio executives harassed her and stuff. Yeah, I don't know how, how true that is, but it's a, it's a thing that people around like the internet like speculate and shit. And um, there was also an incident where during filming a scene, it was where Dorothy was gonna was gonna slap the cowardly lion. Okay. And she kept giggling in the scene, so she kept fucking up the scene, and which obviously led to many failed takes. And, and he got them mad. the director Victor Fleming, he got frustrated, ended up calling Judy to the side, pu pulling Judy to the side. Slap the shatter. Slap the shatter her. Yes. Yes, bro. And then the next scene that they took, she was able to get the scene done. Where are her parents while this shit is happening, bro? Uh, that, that I don't know, bro. That I, I don't know, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they're not there. It did, like, again, this is the, the 1930s, bro. bro it was if, different back then. Bro, if Julia or Isabella came up to me like, yo, like, this fucking producer, this fucking teacher, this fucking whatever the fuck just slapped the shit out of me, bro. I'm going straight to their fucking whoever the fuck it is, and I'm beating the fuck out of them, bro. Yeah, for, uh, that's I mean, fucking for sure, bro. crazy, bro. Yeah, like, bro. fuck out of here. I, I don't give a fuck how much you're paying me, if, or if you're my daughter's boss or whatever the fuck. You're not slapping nobody. You bro. know what's you know what's crazy too. Uh, another thing, another like fun fact that I didn't know. So apparently Shirley Temple was supposed to play Dorothy, but. 20th Century Fox um, didn't want to like loan her out to to MGM to start in the movie. Wow. So uh, it's also an another person who like obviously we know. Mistreated. It, mistreated in the industry and stuff. Abusing the industry, yeah. And um, another crazy thing that happened on the movie. Obviously we know CGI wasn't really that big of a deal back then. Yeah. It was more practical stuff. And there was scenes in the movie where it snowed. Right? And it was actual snow? No, bro. So what they would use to make it look like snow was asbestos, which obviously... That's toxic, bro. It's toxic if you inhale it. It's a cancer-causing chemical when you inhale it, bro. And they used that shit, bro. And uh, Judy did end up passing away like at the age of... In, in, basically in her mid-40s. Due and to it, cancer? It, not, I, don't, I don't know if it was due to cancer, but it was just due to a bunch of shit. It was... Uh, I mean, first of all, bro, she was doing the cigarettes, the fucking not eating, right? Yeah, bro, she died. She died due to substance use disorder and various addictions that took over her life. So it was obviously all... It, probably, it definitely stemmed from this shit, bro. Yeah, they, they fucked her up, bro. Yeah, bro. And uh, I want to show you another thing that, that was fucked up about her, like... Her upcoming in the in the industry. Yeah. So in order for her to get this role as uh, uh Dorothy in The Wizard of Oz, she had to do other roles that no one else would really want to take. Mm -hmm. And she ended up a year a year prior to this, she ended up doing blackface in a movie. No way. Yes. And obviously she's fourteen. No, no, she's fifteen at this time. Still a kid. So she doesn't know anybody. She just wants to um you know, take the role and shit. Yeah, she... bro. I come from the south, from way down south, where the corn and the tweeters used to grow their great big elegant pictures go, and my old Kentucky home is a French chap. Oh, way down south in Texas, we... Yeah, bro. Yo, the crazy, it's, it's, it's fucked up, bro. Even, like... Fucking industry, bro. I yeah, swear bro. Fucking gosh, bro. Like, and you would think, like, whatever they have like a say or whatever but it's kind of like their kids their kids and shit and also maybe you know it's like when when you have a job and shit and like oh you you don't want to fucking be broke or you don't want to lose your house or some shit mm -hmm. or 
and you're kind of forced to do it. Mm-hmm. They kind of use that to their advantage and shit. Like, oh, yeah, this motherfucker's broke. He's poor. Yeah. He's going to do what the fuck I say just because, you know, he wants to keep the role or he wants to make the money and shit. Like, yeah, yeah, that's, the, the, that's that, fucking disgusting. The whole Wizard of Oz uh, <laughs> cast went through some fucked up shit. I should roll some down. Um, so you obviously know Tin Man, right? The first actor that was supposed to play Tin Man, his name was Buddy, uh, Buddy Epson. Mm. And he was supposed to play him, but before filming began, Buddy did many makeup and costume tests. And uh, his makeup contained aluminum dust, which they put on him every day. It's like for the, for the, that, was that like the toxic or some shit or harmful? Yes, bro. Aluminum. But yes, bro. I don't, I don't know what that is, bro. It's 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 just like another like harmful chemical, bro. It's like it's something. That, it's something that, bro. They don't put that shit in makeup no more. That she used to be in makeup. Yes, but they used aluminum dust to to get the the silver look for for Tin Man. Nine days into shooting, they ended up stopping because he wasn't able to breathe at one point, and they took him to the hospital. And then, and in the hospital, they discovered that his lungs were coated in aluminum. So due to his makeup. Him constantly inhaling it, it, it fucked him up. He was in the hospital for two weeks, and then he was recovering in his house for another month. He was obviously recasted and stuff, and uh, the person who played Tin Man, instead of them using uh, aluminum mm-hmm. dust, they just painted it on on the on the actor and stuff. Bro didn't sue, like, the company or whatever? I'm pretty sure he didn't, bro. Uh, yeah. And then uh, the Wicked Witch of the West, her makeup was made out of copper dust paint. And there was an incident that happened with her too on set. So there was a scene where she leaves Munchkin Land. There was supposed to be a trap door that obviously brings her down. So she, so whenever the dust settles, she's gone. But the effect had malfunctioned and the fire came too quickly, leading to her hat and her broom catching on fire, which ended up burning her face and hands. And she ended up getting third degree burns on her hands and a second degree burn on her face what the fuck and i'm gonna show you what scene specifically i'm talking about because I, I don't know if you remember the movie that much right there what the fuck, bro? Yeah, yeah, bro. And obviously, a and lot that, that was an accident. They weren't. Yeah, it wasn't. Uh, yeah, it wasn't supposed to happen. It was an accident. And they left it in the fucking scene. Yeah, bro. They left it in the sh- in the movie. Yes. That's fucking, bro. Some disturbing background, bro. Yeah, and then I uh, I know the cowardly lion. Uh, his suit was made out of like actual lion fur, and it weighed like ninety pounds. And in the place where they were filming, it was, it was fucking fuck. hot as fuck. So he was sweating profusely, and every single every single day, the, uh, people would have to dry his uh his suit because it would be covered in sweat. But you can just imagine the working the working conditions in that, bro. The f- it's like a weighted fucking vest on you mixed with like. A bunch of layers yeah. in the fucking heat. Yeah, bro. And then and like, then the, um, the scarecrow. He could pass out from heat, heat exhaustion. Nah, yeah, bro. And then the scarecrow, whenever they put his makeup on, it made it hard for him to sweat. So he got really hot. And then uh, I believe some marks on like his lower lower face were, became permanent because of how much, like, uh, I guess, the type, of, the type of makeup that they used. So it fucked up his his lower face. Yeah, bro, it's, it's a lot of fucked up shit with this sh- with Wizard of Oz, bro. That I didn't know of. You know, a lot, I feel like maybe there's a lot more we don't know of too. Like, uh, not just the Wizard of Oz, ma- oh, like, like like different movies. Movies, because I mean, back in the day, like, I'm pretty sure like the safety protocols were like not like they are now. You yeah. know what I mean? They they was using a lot of practical stuff, and I'm pretty sure like a lot of people got injured or. And they were kind of forced to do it, you know what I mean? Just to keep the role and shit. Yeah, but the the whole thing is just fucked. Like I feel like Judy had the most, the most abuse out of all of them, bro. And for she sure. was only she was young too, bro. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, nah, they they were forcing her to smoke, take drugs, talking shit about her, constantly like downplaying her, like yeah, fucking nah, bro. She definitely got the worst out of it. Damn, imagine Shirley Temple actually went through with the movie. She could have went through even worse shit. Even more. Yeah, bro. But speaking on movies, which is kind of kind of crazy, so I'm going to talk about one of the scariest movies, and not because of, like, what they showed on screen, even though it is pretty scary watching it. Yeah. Like, 
the behind the scenes it's what's actually the most scary okay so i'm talking about the the blair witch project okay right so uh this was movie was directed and filmed and edited by daniel marik marik and eduardo sanchez and basically they just wrote out a screenplay with mm-hmm. no lines and they did that shit in 1994. They basically Wait, so no lines. So it was is it, is it all basically improvised or? Yeah. So so the whole thing was improvised. There was no script, and it was just literally of how the movie was gonna go. Basically, the the actors were just gonna be put in the woods mm-hmm. for eight days, with no lines, just a couple of instructions of what to do, where to go, and. Basically, they just had to be by themselves, three of them. Mm-hmm. So there was a casting call with 2,000 people. Three random people got picked. And for the rest of the film, they used their actual names. For real? Yeah. So the reason why they used their actual names, the reason why it was random casting calls, the reason why there was no lines is because the directors wanted it to be as authentic as possible. The reactions, um, their faces, their expressions... Uh, what they said was real, like was real fear. It what wasn't. The fuck? It wasn't them acting, bro. It was real. Everything was real. It was so real to the point that uh, Heather, which was one of the characters, so it was Heather, Mike, and Josh. Yeah, those were the real names: Heather, Michael, and Josh, uh-huh. or Joshua. And uh, Heather, uh, she believed that it was so real that they thought that they were gonna end up being in a snuff movie. For real? Like, they, they didn't think this shit was going to be, like, a movie. It was so sketchy, bro, like, to the point where they thought they were going to end up in, like, a snuff movie, bro. Like, get killed or some shit, bro. So, I mean, I, I never watched the movie. I know I know it is, like, um those movies where, where the main characters are recording themselves, like, vlog-type movie. Yeah. But I, that's all I know. I never watched it at all. So, I'm going into this blind, bro. Yeah, so, basically... uh they before they filmed they signed forms to basically allow the the production team and the directors to basically like fuck with them and torture them mentally yeah i'm gonna restart that and they also didn't know anything that was gonna happen bro they didn't know any of the scenes that were gonna happen they were just told a couple instructions they were given uh, a cure package every single day okay with like food water and stuff like that they also had a map that they actually had to use. And um, throughout the days, another thing that added to it was that they were slowly giving less, 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 less things. So a lot of food in the first day, a little less, 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 a little less. Were they being monitored or not? Bro, yes. People okay. people were watching them, bro. But uh, Okay, I was just making but they sure. Weren't, they weren't talking to them and they wasn't helping them in any type of way. Did the actors know they were being monitored? The, the actors, bro, they they signed up for okay, that. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay, okay. So, uh, whatever. They didn't know anything that was going on. So, in the scene where they um, the the production team starts playing laughter, or they or the actors hear children laughing in the woods, mm-hmm. they they didn't know that that was gonna happen. So they were actually scared, and they also didn't know that the Blair Witch was just a a made up thing, like. Basically, uh, they went to a town, okay, and they had told them that it was a real town, okay. But it was actors and stuff, and they asked like, "Oh, did you guys see the Blair Witch?" And they were like, "Yes, yes, like she's in the woods and shit, or like the Blair Witch." Oh, in the woods. so they, okay, okay, okay. And uh, basically, they, the whole this whole time, they low key thought that that it was a possibility that the Blair Witch was a real life thing. Okay. So um. That scene where, like I said, the children laughing, they they like started getting like shook and shit, and then the production team shook their tent. So in the scene, you see them shook their tent, and they run out of the tent barefoot, and that was not like scripted or anything like that. They were literally terrified. Fuck. And what they were supposed to do is that whenever one of the characters said, "Yo, well, what is that? What the fuck is that?" Heather yelled, "What the fuck is that?" They were supposed to turn to like a person dressed in like a white like cloak it was going to be the Blair Witch but they they were too scared that they didn't end up like doing what they were supposed to do and you basically never see the Blair Witch in the movie you just kind of hear 
like um see things but you never actually see the Blair Witch, right? Uh huh. And also um sometimes they would give directions to one of the 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 actors and not all of them. So there was a scene where uh they had told I think it was Josh to get rid of the map. So they had a map that they were following the whole time and it was actually taking them to where they were supposed to go. Okay. So they had sent like instructions and shit uh-huh. and they told Josh to get rid of it and to not tell the others that he's going to get rid of it. So they got confused and shit and they were like going in circles and in the movie it shows that they went in circles. They're like, bro, we've been going through the same spots like mad times. They were la- literally lost. They were lost in the woods. Yo, what the fuck? So um, this whole time, bro, like People thought that it was just a bunch of acting, a bunch of uh, scripts, and basically fake stuff. Meanwhile, the whole time, it was a real-life reaction. But it's like we were watching people getting scared in real life. What the fuck? I never knew that, but not going to lie, that's low-key like a good method to a movie, bro. It is. I'm pretty sure that's the reason why a lot of people say it's scary as fuck or why a lot of people say that it's one of the scariest movies. Around that's that's a movie I was gonna suggest we should watch because so I we, haven't watched it. We should watch that if you guys want to uh, watch it with us. Follow the Patreon and shit. We'll watch it on the Patreon and react to the full movie and shit. Not yet, Un- uncut of course. We do not post like cut up reactions on there. You get everything in full. But yo, what the fuck? That's that I've never that, like that's a whole like that. What should we call it? That takes uh, method acting to a whole new level. Or yeah, bro, that's not bro. That's like. You're literally scaring something like yeah. bro. It's real fear, bro. Like, real, like real life shit. And I knew, you know, what's crazy. I told you you were gonna react like this. Remember, I told you. Yeah, uh, cause I'm bro. I never knew about that shit. Yeah, bro. I never knew about it either. I thought bro. we were gonna say some shit that like, oh, this conspiracy about a character, this and that. Nah, but, bro. Damn, bro. And like, shout out to the the TikToker who I got it from. I'm gonna send you the video of who it was. Oh, I bet. But. I basically got it from her video because um, she basically said that it was real shit and she, she said all these things. But yeah, bro. That shit actually got me, got me wanting to watch Blair Witch now. Not gonna lie. We, we, should, we should definitely watch it. Like yeah, I said, guys, bro. if you guys want to watch it with us, I'm pretty sure a lot of y'all want to watch it now. Subscribe to the Patreon. You watched it before? Uh, I, I didn't watch it. No? Nah. I think I, think I watched pieces of it. Mm-hmm. I watched pieces of it, but I'm pretty sure I was just like, eh, I'm bored. My last and final thing, mm-hmm. what I'm gonna talk about is uh, the Granny Ripper, or AKA Baba Yaga, right? Fuck the boogeyman. So this um this case is about Tamara Samsonova. Okay. So when she got caught, she was 71 years old, right? And a little backstory to her is that she was born February 5th, 1947, in Uzhur, Russia. And she was moving around. She moved to Moscow. And she studied at uh, the University of Moscow. And basically, she ended up meeting her husband. Who she married, which his name was Alexei Samsonova. And she was married for like about basically 30 years. So she was married for 30 years living in St. Petersburg. Dimitrov, Dimitrova Street. Okay. And out of nowhere in the year 2000, right? In the year 2000, after being married for 30 years, he ends up going missing. So she files a missing report saying that my husband um, fled with a woman and she, he never came back. Okay. So that's what she claims. The cops came. They obviously started investigating stuff and saying, yo, where the fuck is your husband, right? Mm-hmm. And basically, whatever, she said, yeah, he left, like, whatever, I don't give a fuck, and shit. And they kind of just left it at that, because they couldn't find anything, they didn't find nobody, they didn't have no clues, no leads, so they basically just stopped looking, right? Okay. A year later, she gets lonely, she's kind of, like, depressed and shit, so she gets this idea that she's going to start renting a room. To like anybody who wants to be part of the house and shit, right? Kind of have a roommate so she's not alone in the house. Okay. So in 2003, she ends up finding a roommate. Um, his name is Vladimir. 
Okay. But the neighbors would say that they would constantly hear like banging, arguing, and her cursing at Vladimir. Mm -hmm. And basically like it was just an ongoing thing that she would have a lot of problems with the people who are going to live with her. Okay. So her roommates, right? And they would just end up leaving. So that w that's what happened with Vladimir. Okay. He just ended up leaving, right? But in 2003, uh, this is when she had another uh, roommate, right? Because she just kept, like, just, like, switching off roommates, yeah. roommates, roommates, because nobody really fucked with her, and she was just, like, crazy, right? So this guy in 2003, Sergei Patonian, he ended up being the new roommate, right? And he was from out of town. He wasn't from where they were from and shit. And out of nowhere, again, he, he just was never seen again people just stopped seeing him people stopped seeing him coming in and out of the house it's, and no one's no one's sussing this woman so the reason why they didn't question that is because he was out of town and they kind of just like thought oh maybe he he just went back to his hometown because he was far away from where he lived so they thought maybe they got tired of her like how you know it's like a reoccurring Ongoing thing cycle yeah yeah so they they all the neighbors thought maybe this motherfucker got tired of her Got tired of her bullshit and it was like, yeah, I'm out. I'm yeah. just going to go back to my hometown, right? So whatever, that happened. And 2015, which was already... That's like uh, 12, 12 years, years later. Yeah, yeah, it's a 12-year gap, right? Uh, her house kind of needs renovations and shit. She's 68 years old at this time, bro. So okay. she's, she's pretty old now, right? Yeah. So she decides that she's going to go live with one of her friends while her house is being renovated and basically her house is being fixed up, right? Her name is Valentina Ulanova. Okay. And she was okay with the move. Like, she was saying that she loved staying there. And basically, she didn't want to go back to her house. She basically just fucking mm -hmm. crashed there and was saying, yeah, I'm going to stay here type shit, right? So, um, so in uh, July uh, 23rd, right? 2015, she ends up going to a really far town, right? Pushkin. Mm -hmm. So she ends up going to this really far town And that's where she ended up getting Phenazepam So somehow she convinced the pharmacist To prescribe her this medication Which was a Russian made schizophrenia medication That's supposed to relax you And kind of mellows you out Basically just like Kind of getting you high She ends up coming back She passes by the supermarket She picks up some stuff And um she basically makes like a, a Russian potato salad, right? Okay. And in that Russian potato salad, that basically was her roommate's favorite food. And during this time, she was having a lot of problems with her roommate, which was Valentina Ulanova, right? So uh, they were having a lot of problems and stuff. So this is what leads to this, right? She ends up cooking the food, the potato salad. Yeah. And she, she said... She confessed that she crushed up 50 pills and basically laced the salad and gave it to her friend. After giving it to her friend, she ended up going to bed. She woke up to her friend, like, basically on the floor, unconscious, limp, bro. Like, yeah. Like, dead, bro. You know, she overdosed and shit, right? Then after that, she ends up uh, dismembering her body. She chops up her head first. Fuck. Then her arms. And she proceeds by basically dismembering her body. And there's video CCTV footage of her like um, dragging the body out and like kind of disposing it piece by piece. No because, fucking way. Because she was a 60 year old lady, she couldn't lift up the whole body. Yeah. So she had to chop it up, and little by little, she was taking out of her apartment and shit or her house. And another thing that was weird about it is that there was uh in the CCTV footage you could see her bringing out a pot. No. So what they're saying is that she never confessed to it. She never had said or admitted that she was a cannibal. But people were saying that why was there organs missing and why was there a pot? So she could have possibly ate her organs and shit organs, or pieces yeah. and stuff, right? So in the autopsy, they also found out that Valentina was most likely still alive while she was being dismembered. She was still breathing Fuck. and shit. And... Um, the only reason why she even got caught was because a couple was walking their dog from the same street that they live in. The couple was walking their dog, and 
the dog kept like trying to like go to the pond behind their house okay they had a pond behind their house and the dog just kept like wanting to go over there something is there type shit right so they got curious and stuff so they ended up following the dog and letting the dog go to where motherfucker was being curious and shit and that's when they end up seeing like the dismembered body inside like a shower curtain a clear shower curtain they go to the house they obviously question her and she confesses to everything she says yeah like i did it and shit like that she also even had a journal of her journaling every single person she killed and in the 20 years that basically everything happened she killed 13 people 13 people some of them they didn't even know about they don't know who certain people was but one of them who was the one who she killed was that guy sergey who supposedly like just disappeared and went back to his hometown but she actually killed him and the first tenant that she ever had vladimir he, she killed him as well he didn't die but there was a report of him going to the hospital and being very sick because he was like poisoned with some drugs kind of like what she did to the girl her friend and shit so um yeah she uh confessed to everything she even like um took him to their ho- the house and showed him how she dismembered the body and shit step by step with a dummy oh my god like going through the head to the, everything else and shit and it was just like a fucking mess in there there was blood everywhere like blood stains and shit and it was just disgusting we have shit. the video of her I'm gonna show you the video. What the fuck? Yeah, you can see it like her carrying the body and shit. What the fuck? Oh, is this one here? You see her dragging out the bag? Yeah. See the pot? Yeah. That was her again? Or yeah. somebody else? Yeah, it was her again. Or maybe somebody else. So, she's a very, like, fucking crazy lady and shit. But, um, you said the, what? You said, oh, yeah, the, um, I don't think there's a video, but there's pictures of, like, the dummy on the floor. Let me see. You see? What the yeah, fuck? Yeah, so they, they, they put the dummy there, and, like, they were just asking her how to, how she performed the... How she dismembered the bodies. Yeah, exactly. That's crazy, bro. Damn it, she looks like a fucking innocent old lady. Yeah, bro. She was, like I said, 68. She was 71 and shit, or 68, 71. Yeah. By the time she was caught, I think she was 71 years old, but, bro. Even then, bro, she she still looked pretty innocent. That's what I'm saying, bro. And they still, to this day, don't know if she was the one who killed her husband, or if he actually fled with another woman. Oh, that's still a mystery? Yeah. People are saying that, like, she most likely ended up killing her husband. Yeah. But yeah. And and there's a lot more to that story. Like interviews and shit like that. This is just kind of scraping the surface. I was going to say, uh, how come they call her, you said Baba Yaga? Oh yeah, so basically what that means is uh, evil old witch. Evil old witch? Yeah. I thought Baba Yaga used to like mean, man, the boogeyman. Because of John Wick. All right, so literally, Baba Yaga translate into meaning into meaning grandmother Jadwiga. The witch-like character is used by parents to encourage their children to stay close to home and behave behave themselves. Baba Yaga is an elderly woman with a long nose and iron teeth who kidnaps and threatens to eat young children. So it's basically like a witch. Fuck. I'm actually gonna talk about that next um. What next episode? What. Urban legend of the Baba Yaga. Uh, but, but uh, guys, that does conclude. Uh, you have no more, right? Nah. That does conclude uh, this episode, episode one one hundred two. 
Uh, sorry, sorry guys, if my energy has been a little low this episode. I'm kind of, I'm fucking, I'm fucking tired. Um, and I only had, I'm sorry that I only had one topic for you guys. Uh, you guys can co- come at me if you want. That doesn't really matter. I, I, I gave you guys some some pretty good topics for like the past couple episodes. Like I don't know how many episodes, uh, how many episodes in a row I've 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 gave you, but. It's my little, I guess my little break or whatever. I'm gonna, I'm gonna come back next next episode strong with like some good, good topics, more topics. To be fair, it doesn't matter, bro. Shout out to you guys supporting. Um, shout out to the Patreons. Oh yeah, thanks. Aide Rivera, Yubi Rivera, Anai, Sharon Needles, Alvaro, Alvaro Morales, aka El Ceviche. And so, apologize for like me, like I don't know why I'm talking like this. What you mean? Like I'm like uh, slurring my words and I'm like. Maybe it's because I'm drained and shit or something like that. Something is going on with me. Probably like Evil Eye or, or Medio Eye Light or some shit. Probably. Probably. I feel like that's that's what it is because I feel weird. Like right now, like I don't feel like myself. But um, shout out to Andrew Padilla, Stephanie, Jimena Rojas, Maria Fernanda Munoz, Eric Mendez, Ronaldo MD, Esquivela, Eli, FC Crew 76. Angel Garcia, DJ Chris, Damika Bukwa, Elias Luera, Juan Medina, Jesus Chavez, Dragon430, Isabel Adelen, Maribela Lara, Elizabeth Carillo Diaz, Lexi underscore Lou, Rosa, Alex Manriquez, Jocelyn Harrison, Nathan Herrera, Jose Aguilera, Jose, Jaime Oral Vavera, Bel Mendoza, Zia Zeus, Miguelito, Will Jimenez, Sean underscore 16, Jennifer and Montalongo. And that's Space Guy. We fucking love you guys. You guys are always showing support. Facts. Uh, before uh, the, the episode does end, I just want to give some uh, comment shout outs. Obviously, because you guys always flood the comment section. So it don't, it only seems right. Um, I'm trying to look for one more. There was a lot of support on, like, on, on Abby. Of, I saw uh, that, yeah. Her passing and then a lot of support from you too, for you too. Yeah, sh- shout out to you guys, bro. I, I damn, I should have talked about that this episode. What? Damn, but thank you guys for showing support. You guys that ass care about us type shit. And um, Abby obviously thanks you guys a lot. Yeah. She was telling me how like, you know, the comments like, I guess cool how like people are supporting you and shit, and like people actually care, you know. Yeah, you know, you know, you know what I think it is. I think it's the fucking eclipse fucking everything up. You think that's what it is? I don't know. What was good with us? What's what's good with our energies? I don't know. Something's going on, bro. Let us know. Let us know, guys. Let us know what the fuck's going on. Should we get a Should we get a egg cleanse? Low high key. I'm about to get one tomorrow, bro. And then I'm gonna give you guys an update on the podcast with a picture of how it looks and shit. Cleanse me with an egg, bro. Uh, <laughs> shout out, shout out to Diana. <laughs> Oh no, Dayanara Guzman, five nineteen. I was at the nail salon watching your podcast, and I was so tuned in that I did not even notice the earthquake happening until the nail techs were talking about it. Thank you for the distraction, cause I would have been bugging throughout uh throughout it. Uh, shout out to <laughs> yo, pay attention to your surroundings, bro. Shout out to uh Adana, no, oh no, Aiden or Aiden, mm-hmm. Aiden and es- Esquivel, Aiden Esquivel, uh, 6627, you said at 125, uh, timestamp, that's like when we do the, um, shoutouts and shit? No, 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 um, motivational shit, motivational videos oh. and stuff, mm-hmm. uh, you guys really made me feel better about myself, right now I'm trying to get into med, uh, med school, and I didn't get accepted in the, I didn't get accepted in the first time, but hopefully in the next 20, 2025 cycle, uh, I can apply and get get accepted somewhere. I can apply and get accepted somewhere. Thank you for making me understand again that everything takes time. Well, we're glad that we're able to um you know give you guys some motivation in the beginning. Sometimes it's a little hard on us to have our own motivation and stuff. So I mean, I'm I'm glad we're able to motivate you guys, even if it's a little bit. Um. And just seeing the comments always motivates me to try and do better. So thank you guys for that. And yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you have anything to say to that. 
Uh, no, nah, I'm just honestly very tired, guys. But I do appreciate you guys always, always showing support. And next episode, we're going to come back even stronger. Like, I felt like my topics were pretty good this episode. Nah, yeah, they were, bro. They were, trust me. They, they, they were pretty good this episode. My regular topics were mid. Yeah, I, I didn't really have any regular topics and shit. Yeah. But, guys, next episode, we gotcha. We yeah, gotcha bro. For sure. Uh, and apologize again, guys. Uh, kind of feel bad because... We've been on a good streak, even though I, this was this was a good episode, uh, scary topic wise. I just nah, bro, you're scary. Yeah, bro, the scary. I feel like this scary topic wise was better than. It, it's on. It could be better than last episode a little bit. Not even really. better than the whole like when I had the uh, Rosa Guadalupe with Justin Bieber shit. Like that was, that's a, oh, that was episode 100. Yeah, this might have been better than that. Or. I'm, I'm, I could just be bugging to be honest. I'm gonna fucking rewatch this shit and be like, "Yo, it wasn't even that bad." Bro, that's what always happens to me. Bro, bro, your scary shit. This episode was valid. Yeah, because it was long too. It wasn't just short. I'm just overthinking it, guys. Um, pray for us. Leave, leave us some love in the comments, please. I, I really, really, I really, really fucking need it. Uh, we haven't done this in a minute too. If you got to this point, oh yeah, comment Baba Yaga. <laughs> if you got to this point, comment. Baba Yaga. If you know how to spell it, because... That fucking bitch is going to appear to us because we keep saying it, bro. I swear. Oh, fuck. Anyways, with that being said, guys, that concludes this episode. Hope you guys enjoy. We'll see you, we'll see you guys on the next episode. Uh, it's been your host, George Messiah. Messiah. It's been your host, Ricardo, a.k.a. The Ricardo. I seen a comment. Yo, bro, don't call yourself Messiah. What the fuck are you talking about? You're not, you're, not, you're not the fucking messiah. What kind of blasphemy is this, bro? I saw that shit too, bro. Bro, first of all, first of all, first of all, bro, it's with a Z. Yeah. And second of all, if he ever said that shit to himself, I would slap the shit out of him. Yeah, bro. I, I don't claim to be some higher up person, bro. I just I just like the name. But I do, I do see where they're coming from because I know it's like a really, really religious name. But... Yeah, guys, we'll see you guys in the next episode. And yeah, do not let the podcast go. And then this.